came here in June of this year. I uh, was a high school teacher for 15 years. I taught uh, at Atley High School and I taught at the Chesterfield Technical Center. And um, you know, I just came here. I, I've been telling my students I just finally graduated. It took me 15 years to get out of high school, but now I'm here. Um, and so I'm really happy to be here. Um, and welcome to our campus. I'm usually here if you ever need me um, or need anything from, from here. I'm in a trailer on the other side of the park. Um, so anyway, I thought I would um, kind of go on what is our role as a community college in getting us some STEM students um, for college and for careers. Um, you know, as a high school teacher, I was told, especially when I was at the Tech Center, that we were all trying to get our students to be college and career ready. And so I worked on that as a career tech ed teacher, and now um, as a professor here, and woman as a coordinator here, it really is to be both college and career ready. So I'll share with some of the things that we're doing here at John Tyler, and really how it's um, all of us working together to get our students there. Um, so we have a strategic plan we just came up with here at John Tyler, and it really is student focused. Uh, we're really into student success here, and all of our things that we're doing here is to try to get our students, again, college, okay, if they're transferring to a four-year university, um, or then to the career level. Um, what can we do? Well, here we are, middle school. I just was at a conference last week, and actually, they were already talking about pre-K programs, um, and how the governor was going to spend a lot of money to help our pre-K students. Um, already learn about careers and things like that. Um, but definitely at the middle school and high school levels, we have a lot of programs that we help with at the community college level. Um, we have to get them to the workforce. And the four-year colleges and the community college play a big role in that. It really is circuitous once you get out of the, at the post-secondary level. Students can either go right from high school into the workplace, but those types of jobs are becoming fewer and fewer. Most um, career pathways will require some type of post-secondary training. Um, that's just the name of how it is. Um, whether that's a career study certificate, a license, um, or a certification, um, something's going to be necessary um, after the high school level. And where can they obtain those is really at the community college, the four-year universities do help to give the, um, the bachelor's degree that's going to be necessary or, or more. Um, but at the community college level, we can help those students get started on that pathway. Um, John Tyler is a STEM age school. Um, that's what this is all about. But we focus really on three things. And me as the coordinator, what I'm focusing in on that is recruitment of students. I'm trying to get students to be interested in STEM. Okay, like we know so many of them don't even know what STEM is, and, and that's, you know, they don't need to know what that acronym means, but they do have to be interested in those career pathways. And some of them don't even know what career pathways are possible, um, besides things that they see every day. You know, whether it's a doctor or a nurse, um, that's about it. And um, we're also focusing on retention of those students um, to increase the credential rates. Uh, we have a, a, a goal of having uh, increasing our rates by three times um, in the next five years. So that's our goal as a community, as a community college system. Um, and also assisting the students and graduates in career opportunities um, and let them know everything that's um, available with our transfer partners. Uh, VSU is one of them. Well, Every four-year college in the state is one, but we work closely with Virginia State University, with VCU, and with ODU, um, and also with um, Longwood and Virginia Tech. This was a very sad thing to me. Um, so, recruitment. It's very sad. <laughs> but when we look at the national average, okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're just right with the national average, but still, that's just so sad um, when I see that. And especially when we look at mathematics, um, the students that say they want to major in math. Um, the engineering is high, but most of that is mechanical engineering uh, when we look at students of what they want to go into. And most of that is going to be our, our males, um, students that want to do that. 
females do not really want to go into engineering. Um, so we have to get these numbers up. Um, we do a lot of recruiting events at uh, middle schools and at high schools, but we also are doing a lot of outreach to communities. So we'll go out to um, community centers, to churches, um, things like that. So those are some of the places that we are going and to show about our different programs that we have. Um, how can we better prepare our students to get here? Um, Dr. Hill said, this is the biggest thing. <laughs> if we get students here, to get them to graduate, even with a certificate or a certification, most of our students require remedial math. Um, in module one <laughs> is fourth and fifth grade math. The reason they can't pass that test is because they can't use a calculator. Um, so the Virginia placement test, you can't use a calculator on your very first placement test for college. Um, students are failing that, and even though we offer those modules in a four-week session, um, they may still have three or four modules that they have to do. They may be in trig in high school, but they cannot, they don't know the multiplication tables. Um, so that's a very sad thing. Um, we tell, try to tell students to study for the test before they come. We do have online um, study guides that go along right with the test. Um, but they don't really take it seriously. They don't realize the impact. If a student has to take uh, remediation, whether it's in math or English when they get here, they are, I don't remember the statistics, but it's almost like 50% they're not likely to graduate with anything because they get so far behind and then they get a job or it's a low paying job that's not in the STEM field. So what we say is that they are college attending but they're not college ready. So our goal is also to get those, meet those students that are college, we have two things. The students that are college attending, we need to get them college ready. And so we're trying to do some remediation programs with them through the high schools and through the middle schools, and I'll talk about a couple of those in a moment. But then we're also trying to reach a group of students that are college ready, but not college intending. A lot of those are first time in college students, so they don't know about the opportunities that are out there to them. So there's two groups of students that we're really trying to work on in our recruiting efforts. Um, and so how we're doing that is just what teachers can help to do is to try to promote those career pathways. Um, it was easy for me when I was at the technical center because that was part of our curriculum. So um, that was a really good thing. But I know that it's very difficult to do that in the context of all the other things that have to go on in a classroom, whether it's a math classroom or a science classroom. Um, but I will say that field trips are a great way to promote um, uh, career pathways. Um, also, just to make sure that they do take math as much as possible. To take math all the way through their senior year does seem to help as well. Um, and also just help them understand that expectations of college are different than high school. In that, um, in high school your teachers are really there for you and you can take as much time with, with certain things to a point. In college you're a lot more on your own. Um, I will say that here we are very much helping our students and we have free tutoring and all those kinds of things, but it's the just who's in charge of it. A, a professor's not going to call home if you haven't done your homework, okay, or if you haven't done your practice problems or something like that. Um, they're not going to call home if you miss class. So those types of expectations is what I'm um, talking about. Something that we just started also with Hopewell and Petersburg uh, is known as early college. And some different um, community colleges are doing um, the same type of program, but they reach a different population. What we decided to look at were these students then that were maybe college ready, but not college attending. A lot of the students in Hopewell and Petersburg um, would be first time in college uh, students. So what we're doing there, we've gone in there, and it starts actually in the ninth grade. The students actually take a Virginia placement test that the students take when they're coming to community college. Um, and they, as long as they're not placed, as long as they're not like, as long as they can 
get to level zero, okay, which is fifth grade math, um, they're eligible for the program. Um, they take ninth and tenth grade classes, are taken at their high school, and they are involved with, um, they have mentors, and they also have um, accelerated classes. When they're in eleventh and twelfth grade, they actually come to the John Tyler campus for their classes. So it's possible then for these students through dual enrollment and some AP courses that they could graduate then with their associate's degree along with their high school degree. And so this is another way that we're trying to get the STEM students here. And this was just something that was from the newspaper. Um, we also have concurrent students here in our advanced manufacturing, precision machining, and um, welding classes. And these students are coming from Dinwiddie, Amelia, Prince George, and Chesterfield just joined this year. And the students come here for two years. They still go to their home high school for um, English, and things like that. But they come here every other day. Um, well, for two, some of the counties are two days a week and some are every other day. But they come here and at the end of it, um, these students are being hired at like Rolls Royce and CCAM and things like that. So it's really awesome. These were the first four graduates, these young men here. And um, this is a really great video um, of this young man talking about his experience. So this is really great. The students, it's free. Okay, so they're getting national certifications from this. Um, and they have a job making about $40,000 a year when they leave high school. Um, with their certifications. Um, our transfer degree program, so for retention, we're trying to do a lot of things to help the students, one, know about what career um, pathways go along with what majors. Um, we have associate of science degrees. Those are transfer level degrees. We have articulation agreements with all of the universities and colleges in the state of Virginia. Um, and so along with their advisor, they know exactly what courses to take to be to pursue a different major at um, the college level. And so some of them are here. The, I just put out the STEM ones. So we have engineering. We do have a pre-BSN program along with our associate of science, um, associate of applied science for the RN program. Um, we're also encouraging some of our STEM students to pursue teaching, okay? Um, and a lot of them don't think about that. Um, so we're trying to get this. We do have two um, great programs with VSU and with v VCU um, that are basically full-ride scholarships. If the students get their degree here and then transfer to VCU or VSU um, to teach either math or to teach science, um, it's basically a free ride. Um, that's the scholarship. Um, these are some of our Associate of Pl Applied Science degrees. These generally, this is where all of our certifications are going to be, or our licenses. So if it says Associate of Applied Science, that's generally, um, it's a more of a technical degree. And this is something that um, we've seen with students that are struggling with math, or especially with, they want to be an engineer. Again, they think they want to be an engineer because that's really all they know. Okay, They know they like tinkering with fixing things or taking things apart. So they think they want to be an engineer, but the math just keeps whacking them down. But what they don't realize is that there are things called engineering technicians. And the industry has told us that we need about eight engineering technicians for every engineer um, in the workplace. So we have these um, engineering technology degrees, um, whether it's in uh, architectural, electrical, um, mechanical. Um, so those are um, Associate of Applied Sciences. They'll get their license. Um, they'll get some certifications along the way. And again, these are our students that are being hired right out of these programs right into the workplace. Um, we also have uh, certificates and career study certificates. These are very popular for people that don't really maybe know what they want to do or if they're career switchers things like that, or if they just need to boost up maybe something that they need to do. Sometimes the um, employers also send their students to us just to take some of these courses. Um, our workforce and career development, we do have um, 
business partners, all the programs have an advisory committee. We have something called the Peer Consortium, which is all of the high schools in the John Tyler Service Area belong to that. They pay money to that to help your students. So if you ever need teacher grants and things like that, call John Tyler and ask to go to the Peer Consortium. Um, our Career Pathways um, can help uh, get those students, it's listed on there, what courses students want to take for a particular career. Starting at the middle school level, all the students are required now to do that. Um, so to do their Career Pathways. And we also have Career and Internship Coordinator now here. And we've started a job board and I have some of her cards here as well. What can John Tyler do for teachers? Well, maybe he didn't know, but we have some money to give to teachers to either pursue um, some things that you'd like to do. For instance, um, we have courses here for teacher recertification. Um, I didn't print out what it was because it was old. It was for this semester, so I don't know what the courses are going to be next semester, but they'll be coming out in an email to you as well. Um, our tuition is one-third of a four-year university's college, so that's good to know. We also have um, study abroad programs. Oh, wait a second. I don't know if it was on there or not. Maybe it's on the next one. Okay, so study abroad. If you want to go to Ireland, if um, you're going to Ireland this summer, you can get three, credit, uh, three classes um, there. So if you'd like to study abroad, you can go to Ireland with them this year. <laughs> We also have, um, if you're interested in teaching a STEM course that's dual enrollment, so if you're interested in becoming a dual enrollment um, instructor, you do have to have the same credentials as an adjunct here. If you are close by meaning about maybe two more courses towards your master's degree, or for certain STEM things, it could be a license. For instance, if it was in engineering um, or in robotics or something like that, perhaps it's a... Um, a certification. We can give you a scholarship to pay for that. So we'll pay for that and that again is through the peer consortium. Um, and then, so just check with your guidance counselor and your administrator because this was one of the problems sometimes this happens is that a teacher wants to do this but the administrator doesn't want to have that class because it may compete with, they don't want to have dual enrollment bio because they have AP bio and the county wants to have more AP bio. Um, so that's kind of just something, but dual enrollment's better than AP, but anyway, so, <laughs> um, but anyway, that's what I think, but, um, so if you have any questions, we'll hold them on for later, um, and again, welcome to John Tyler.